Good. All right, hi everybody, this is BS Outdoors. So on the last episode, you saw us throwing this into acid. Well, now we're gonna show you what we do with the hides after they get out of acid. And uh, a lot of times, what you're gonna do, you're gonna get uh, all the extra fat and skin off of them. So most of you guys are gonna use one of these. This is a large uh, pelt scraper. It's got a blade on one side to scrape all the extra fat off. Show that to you guys there. Sharp blade, scrape all the fat off. And then we're gonna show you how we do it one of these. This is a fleshing knife here. I run one of these every single day. Um, a lot of times uh, you see these more in big factories or tanneries, um, but when you have a connection and you do as much as he does, he spent the money and bought one of these. Brand new, these are about $1,600. Depending on what brand and uh, who you go through. This is a Dakota 5. So, I mean, it is a little bit older, but it works great. We will show you guys how to use these. But using one of these, you can make bigger mistakes than you can using this. So we're gonna show you guys both ways. And uh, yeah, we'll show you this step on uh, tearing uh, raw goods to tan fur. <clears throat> All right, so in the last episode, we've seen uh, the fox, they got flipped into the acid solution. And we talked about a little bit, the pHs, stuff like that. So now, we're ready to pull something out here. And I'm gonna show you just a little bit. We're not, uh, I kinda touched these up a little bit the other day. So, we'll, uh, we'll find one here that's not a little bit nicer to be used for the uh, hand tool. So, let me just wring this thing out a minute. Some people don't believe in kind of uh, wringing them out hard like that. There's all kinds of different methods, but for me, I, I've never had any kind of trouble like that, so. I want to show you here, I left a couple little patches on some of these. See this little patch right here? That's what the whole hide, that's what this entire hide looked like before. So, there's a, uh, this pelt scraper here so you can go in here and you can get underneath that like this and you can work all these hides up like that um, some people they'll even wait and they'll sand their hides after they're completely tanned and let me tell you this is going to be one of them things where you're just going to have to really be patient and work at it uh, another thing I used to do when I first started and I didn't have a machine, I'd get it started and I'd just get these catfish pliers and I'd just work that right off of there. And like I said, a lot of people have different ways of doing it, but we're going to show you a little bit about the machine today. So because it is a very sharp blade and it's spinning and I don't want my hands to get chewed up too bad. If I do get them into it, I've got a little bit of these uh, Kevlar gloves that you can get stuff like this, maybe some Harbor Freight, I don't know. So I'm just going to take this little piece right here off. Now, I'm going to turn this thing on. These right here are tuning steels, kind of like tuning up the blade of your knife. And they are, let me get this to move out a little. Is actually, I haven't started this up in a minute, so it's gonna throw a little bit of rust out. I tried a WD-40, so I'm just kind of just cleaning off a little bit of that stuff from the last time I used it. All right, now we're gonna tune it. So I got a bottom steel and a top steel, and they're gonna kind of sit like this when I tune the blade. The bottom one makes it makes it sharper, the top one actually takes it back down, builds it back out again. So we don't want it super sharp because we're doing fox. Now what you're going to do when working with something like this, you're going to go to a, see I here I cut a hole in it last time, you're going to go to a little area here that you might not worry about as much, not going to be as visible, and stretch it out, kind of work it up a little bit. 
so we're not taking as much off, so let me tune it back up real quick. Looks like we might have it, so let's just uh, show you real quick. We'll see if we can get this strip off of here. There we go. Got that strip of stuff off of there. But basically what you'd be trying to do with this is just go around and get hit these high spots on your hides. Um, you get certain animals and it's a lot more work, especially up here towards the back of the head. You always got that little plate, no matter what you're dealing with, raccoons, coyote, fox, anything, you always got that little plate. And you get like this uh, fat here, so I'm not gonna be using a lot of these heads. You get in there, and this machine here, just kind of takes all that off. See, it's getting it right down in there. So, the next, uh, the next step after you're removing all this fat and all this extra on here <clears throat> is actually gonna be, we gotta neutralize it because remember, we've had these things in acid for a couple of weeks now um, but because I already touched them up uh, last week we are going to go ahead and be able to neutralize them today normally after you do a uh, thinning and shaving process like this you're going to take it and you're going to put it back in your acid and you're going to give it a good stir up and you're going to leave it in there for another 24 hours to 48 hours before you would actually uh, before you would actually go to the neutralizing step, but like I said for time's sake I actually Touched them all up kind of a little bit last week And we're just kind of giving you a short little demo on the shaving part of it right now so, Now why would you throw them back into acid? So a lot of times like right there on the back of the ear Where I touched up that fox. I don't know which one it is now, but where I touched up the back of that fox now this one right here, I didn't shave the face on it. You could see how, here how it looked before. But what you're doing when you're shaving it is you're exposing areas that were uh, that the acid might not have been able to get to. So say I shave this head off here, uh, peel all that meat back. There may still be some uh, untreated flesh up underneath here. There may, might be actually uh, even just even red meat under there. It could still be pink. Could still be holding bacteria. And by taking off all this membrane and all that extra stuff, it just allows that acid to penetrate down in there. Because you would think that being in the acid for that amount of time and, and uh, getting stirred and doing all the steps, that it would just soak right on through, you know, uh, get right down in there. But these membranes are actually kind of hard for anything to get through. But like I said, because I'm not using any of these, not going to be using any of these spaces, I'm actually not really worried about about them as much. And these were actually dry goods when we started, uh, as opposed to uh, green goods or wet goods. So <clears throat> most of the bacteria, uh, you know, during that drying process and everything, would have already started to decompose and hide before. But because of that drying, it was able to. Uh, you know, you're able to preserve them for a long amount of time. For the guys that put them up, some guys will put them up for even up to a year until the prices get good again. So that's why I'm not as worried about this area as much, because if it was gonna do something, it would have probably already been doing something with the hair coming out. So, uh, so yeah, let's get on to the neutralizing for the next step here. All right, sounds good.